Okay, our next topic is going to be epigastric pain. And we're going to start off with gastroesophageal reflux disease, also known as GERD. Now, we all know that GERD is the most common cause of chest pain in America. And in addition to this epigastric pain and substernal chest pain that ha happens with GERD, we're going to have a couple of other associated symptoms with GERD. Some of them include a sore throat, a metallic taste in the mouth, hoarseness. Sometimes they're going to come in with a chronic nocturnal cough, and they can also come in with wheezing. Now, what's our next step if they have any of these symptoms? What we're going to do is we're going to do a trial of proton pump inhibitors, and we're going to tell them to modify their lifestyle. Remember, PPI administration is both diagnostic and therapeutic in GERD. Our most accurate test, if they ask us what is the most accurate test, it's going to be pH monitoring. And this is also going to be done if they ask what is the test we do when the diagnosis is uncertain. If the patient has long-standing symptoms, we're going to do endoscopy and a biopsy is also indi indicated. If there's dysplastic changes in GERD, we're going to do surgery. And all other complications associated with GERD, we're going to do Nissen fundoplication. Now remember, we can actually control GERD with a couple of lifestyle modifications, such as losing weight because we, we know obesity is associated with GERD. Smoking, we can stop smoking because smoking is associated with it. Um, what are the other lifestyle modifications? You tell patients to elevate the head of their bed. You tell them to limit the amount of chocolate um, or caffeine they're intaking. And you, don't, you tell them not to eat before three hours, three hours before going to sleep. And we want to tell them to modify their lifestyle, and we're going to give them a proton pump inhibitor as well. So remember, GERD, what's our next step? PPI administration, which is both diagnostic and therapeutic. If they ask what's our most accurate test, it's going to be pH monitoring. If there's long-standing symptoms, we do endoscopy and biopsy. And if there's dysplastic changes, we do surgery. And all other complications, we're going to do laparoscopic Nissen fundoplication. Okay, our next topic is going to be Barrett's esophagus. Now, what's important to know in Barrett's esophagus, Barrett's is actually going to be a precancerous lesion. And a lot of these, not a lot of these, but about half a percent of these actually go on to adenal carcinoma. And it's going to be diagnosed, diagnosed by endoscopy. When you do the endoscopy, we're going to be able to visualize the distal esophagus and take a biopsy. And what we want to do in Barrett's is we want to repeat endoscopy every two to three years. Remember, any patient that has comes in with Barrett's esophagus, we have to put them on a proton pump inhibitor. And if there's low-grade dysplasia, what do we want to do? We want to repeat the endoscopy in six to nine months. But if there's high-grade dysplasia, we want to do a distal esophagectomy. So Barrett's esophagus, we want to do a PPI, and we want to re repeat the endoscopy every two to three years. If there is low-grade dysplasia, remember, we want to do a PPI, and we want to re repeat endoscopy in six to nine months. And if there's a high-grade dysplasia, we want to do a PPI, and we want to give them a distal esophagectomy. Esophagitis. Esophagitis is going to be pain only when the patient is swallowing. And what are some common causes of esophagitis? The two they're going to ask you on the exam are candida esophagitis and pill-induced esophagitis. Now, pill-induced is going to be um, a pretty common presentation. We know doxycycline is a common one that they like asking on the exam. And there's going to be an acute onset of odynophagia after taking the pill. And what do you want to tell the patients? You want to tell them to swallow the pills in an upright position. And you make sure you tell them to drink enough water to flush the pills into the stomach. Now, candida is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a progressive odynophagia. And if the patient is HIV positive, we want to begin empiric treatment with fluconazole 
And if fluconazole doesn't work, we're going to do endoscopy.